Welcome back, everyone. This month, we're talking about winter and winter wonderland and what do the creatures that we know do in the winter and what do people do in the winter. Today, we're going to read a beautiful, beautiful book called In the Snow. And it's going to, it's a little story about a child who feeds the animals bird seed. And because of the snow, even though these animals, different animals, come up when the child is in the house, when he comes out to add more seed in the morning, he'll be able to see who visited him by their feet prints in the snow. So let's find out about In the Snow. In the Snow is by Sharon Phillips Denslow, and the pictures are by Nancy Tofui. Someone's coming in the snow for the seeds, left high and low. Millet, thistle, corn, dropped so. And if you can see, we have little friends peeking out that are going to be coming out to get this seed. Here comes Chickadee. And they'll come down to eat the seed on the ground. And our next visitor that's coming. Sparrow. So these birds are called songbirds. And a lot of people have these friends in their yard. Cardinal. So we have three different birds right now. We have the chickadee, the sparrow, and the cardinal. And the crow. Some birds are easier to see. They really stand out in the snow because of their coloring. And then here's our next little visitor coming. Someone's coming in the snow. Look at these little feet prints. The front and the back feet are different sizes. Red squirrel and gray, climbing high and running low. So far, we have had birds that are eating the seed that's on the ground. They'll also eat the seed that's up on the log, but the squirrels decide they're going to go up there and eat that seed. And there's also some berries up there. Sometimes you feel like you're feeding the squirrels instead of the birds. Oops, I'm missing a page. Okay. Someone's coming in the snow. Bunnies hopping, soft and slow. Field mouse stops as the shadows grow. Do we see what else is changing now? The moon is starting to come up and we're starting to get shadows because it's starting to get dark. So we have the birds flying away, and we have the other animals coming out. Last to show, in the night, in the snow. What is this little friend? Old man possum, eyes aglow, dark shape crunching, seeds in the snow. In the morning, in the snow, look who came and didn't go. So who is still there? Old man possum. He's sleeping up in a hole in the tree. This page doesn't want to turn. There he is, old man possum in the tree, and he's looking down 
on the child who is coming. The old man possum waits for more seeds brought by me. And here they all come again. The chickadee, the sparrow, the cardinal, the red squirrel, the gray squirrel, the crow, and the field mouse. And you can see their little feet prints in the snow. And here's a better picture of many different feet prints in the snow. So we have mice, birds, the squirrels, the possum, lots of animals come and they really count on that bird seed during the winter because when the snow comes, it covers up the food that they would normally eat. So sometimes it's good that we can help them by giving them bird seed during the winter. Welcome back. So we just finished reading this beautiful story in the snow. So today, what we're going to do, um, because we saw all those little feet prints in the snow, we're going to make salt dough ornaments. And you, um, I'm going to show you two kinds. I'm going to show you the kind that I made uh, a little while ago that is using green, because I added green color to the, the mix. And I'm not sure you can really see it very well, but I have pressed, which is what we're going to be doing today. I have pressed some objects from nature. Uh, this happened to be from a yew bush. This was a pine cone that I rolled in the dough. And this was a scallop shell that I had collected from the um, one of my trips to the ocean. And I just rolled that in. And it shows the shape. But I also made something else so it would be easier for you to see um, for salt dough. And this was, this is a duck's footprint. And so I, what I did is I used just regular salt dough and then when it dried, I painted where the footprint, the imprint was, so you could see it easier. Can anyone guess what kind of animal leaves this kind of print in the snow? We have a lot of them down here on the eastern shore in Maryland. And I think all over <laughs> the state of Maryland. Hmm. This is a deer print. And then this is a familiar friend. A lot of people have dogs. And this is a dog print. And so you can see where it's blue, that was where the print went into the salt dough. And in the book, we saw the print going into the snow. So, in our bag, you will find a little baggie of salt dough all ready for you. But I'm going to tell you, in case you have not been able to pick up a kit or maybe you don't live in the area and can't pick up a kit, salt dough is very, very easy to make. You, you only use three ingredients and sometimes four if you want to make it a different color than the white. You use flour, salt, and water. That's it. So if you're looking for like a little um, project to do that helps math skills, you can make salt dough because you use two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and one cup of water. And you put that in a bowl, and you mix it up, mix it up, mix it up, and then you get the stuff that looks like Play-Doh. If you're adding coloring to it, 
you have to add the color in with the water and mix that in with the water before you pour that into the dry ingredients, which are your flour and salt. Because it's a lot easier to, make, to mix the color then than to think, okay, I've got the white dough, now I want it to be a different color. It's very hard to mix it then. So what we did is we went ahead and made some dough for you to make the ornaments. So um, those of you that are picking up kits, in here you'll have um, some different cards that give you recipes for different things. One of them being the salt dough. Another one is a different project uh, that you use three things for and you make beautiful star crystals. And I'm going to show you that real quickly while I get this out, put this aside. The star crystals are very beautiful and it uses water, boiling water, a laundry soap called borax, a pipe cleaner, and a string. And you make these beautiful, beautiful crystals. And in our case, it's star crystals. And for those of you that are picking up a kit, there will be a star in there for you to use and the recipe of how to make these. And you don't only have to make the stars. I also made a beautiful diamond. So this is another little science project you can do that gives you something beautiful that you can hang in your house. So let's get back to our salt dough. If it has too much water in it, it gets really sticky and you can fix that by adding a little more flour. If it's too dry, then you want to add just a little bit more water until you get something that is like this. See, it's not sticking on my hands and it looks like Play-Doh, but it's salt dough. So what I've done is I have a plate just because it helps me to carry it from one place to another. And I have aluminum foil because if I put the salt dough just down on this paper plate as if it was drying, it would stick to the plate. We don't want that to happen. And I'm putting the aluminum foil here because there's two ways that you can dry this. You can either let it air dry, which takes a few days, and you have to turn it over every, you know, like about twice a day. So it dries, it can dry on both sides and it doesn't stick anywhere. Or you can do the fast way and put it in the oven. And that way you would not put in your paper plate. <laughs> you would use the aluminum foil and you could put that on like a cookie sheet. Turn your oven to 250 degrees and it would be done in about an hour. And on this, you do have to flip it a few times just so it gets a chance to dry on both sides. So what you want to do is go on a little nature walk or pick up things that you had collected from nature other times of the year. And you want to just get your, your ball Make a, make a ball by rolling it, and you want it to be maybe a little smaller than this. Probably like the size of a golf ball, if anyone knows about golf balls or a ping pong ball. Like this, or a walnut. You just put it on your, your tray, and you press down. So you're making, you're flattening it a little bit. So it looks like this, and then you decide what it is that you want to press into this. And so I have collected this off of a tree, which makes a very nice imprint. And then I also went out and I got 
holly leaves with the holly berry because this is also something that you see during the winter time. So I thought, I'm gonna go ahead and press this in. So I won't, this whole thing won't fit in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take these two off and just use this. I'm going to lay it right down on the salto and then I'm going to just press it in gently until I have an imprint. So I'm not sure you'll be able to see this very well, but <coughs> I have it pressed in. <coughs> and I'm going to pull it out. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. And now I have an imprint. I'm going to put mine in the oven and dry it. But before I do that, in, oh, <coughs> in the bag is a little piece of straw. I want to press this through here and make a little hole. Make sure that comes out. And so you have a hole here because when you when it dries, it's very, very hard. And you would not be able to make a hole then in order to hang it up. If you don't do a hole, you'll have something like this. This can't hang up anywhere, but I can certainly put it on my table to look at. So if you'd like one to hang up in your home, use the straw and make a hole in there before it dries. If you just want to have it on your desk or table to look at, then don't worry about the hole. But anyway, have fun doing the salt dough and then also the salt crystal in case you can't pick up a kit. Um, you can find directions for this on one little project. That's one word, onelittleproject.com. Have fun.